Let's go. Uh-huh. Fucking Mario. <laughs> oh, fucking that should have been the fucking podcast footage. <laughs> what Mario? Yeah. <laughs> fucking I, I don't have it yet though. <laughs> so it would be rather difficult. Yeah, that, that's that uh, takes some jiggity pokery. It would do that. Or so you know, <gasps> go run the game. Mm. But um Ross is excited about something now. Ross is playing PUBG, he's excited about most things right now. <laughs> Shooting peoples. Anyways, um... Oh my god, there's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do, you want to do a countdown or shall I just go? <laughs> just go, just go. <laughs> I mean, I've been going for like a minute. <laughs> I'm just working out, the start, just working out the starting protocol, that's all. Uh, welcome to Badger's Borough podcast number 63. Not the greatest three, podcast. Two, one. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest podcast in the world this is just oh, a tribute Ooh. Boo. all right uh joining uh i'm your host jamie uh hi <laughs> uh, jo- <laughs> joining me this week i have ross a and, and alex what up sluts <laughs> i hear them they're coming for me again the sluts? They're back no <laughs> people in the car <laughs> For uh, for those playing at home or anywhere else that you may be listening to the podcast, uh, Ross playing PUBG right now on his um, own. I'll, uh, on his on his own in the um, in the squad match. So it's like <laughs> me versus four folk. Why would you do that? <laughs> Fucking lightning round. I don't know. Fun. <laughs> right, um, I'm I'm going to be playing some Sid Meier's Civilization Five. Get the end. Shout out to Gandhi, yeah. I might play as Gandhi this time, actually. I've not played him yet. I'm going to see how he plays. And uh, Alex, I'm going, to, what I've had. I'm, going to, I'm going to assume you're going to be playing some Forza. Maybe. <laughs> right, so really yes. quickly before we dive into the main bread and butter, um, I want to just shout the December games for gold because they've, they're now out right. and out. Um, so we've got uh, Warhammer The End Times Vermintide. Fuck knows what that. that is. It's um, it. left. It's left for dead, but basically Warhammer style. I Ooh. like it. I'm going to enjoy that game. Um, I've downloaded it already. I'm quite. Ex- uh, I'm kind of. I'm always keen to try most of the games with gold, even though I don't end up actually playing them that much. Um, there's Child of Eden right now as well for the 360 back compat. Um, I actually played that a little bit on the 360. Fucking weird game. Just really, really weird game, but kind of fun at the same time. Like, it's fine just to shove on for, like, ten minutes if you've got nothing else. Mm. And right now you can also get Tales of the Borderlands, the complete season, episodes one to five. I would absolutely recommend you play that. I downloaded it. I actually paid, bought it ages ago and played it, and it was probably one of... (laughs) Paid, bought it, yeah. And it was, like, one of the best fucking Telltale games. Like, Telltale games I always quite enjoy. Like, there's always a, a time... That I go through where I really enjoy playing Telltale games. Oh, they're circling me. And uh, like but sharks. Tales from the Borderlands was really, really good. It was really, really funny. Um, probably has some of the funniest <laughs> fucking scenes I've ever seen in a video game. And actually, kind of felt like a lot of the stuff that I was doing in that. Like Telltale typically has a bit of a pattern of kind of forcing you down a particular path. This game does mm. it as well, but it kind of felt like your decisions actually made some weight because the characters constantly reference things that happen earlier on, what you did, what you said. So it kind of felt like a lot more things actually had some weight on different situations because of the characters actually referring to what you had physically or mentally done. Um, It was one of those. And coming available from the 16th of December, um, you're getting another Telltale style game. I don't actually know if it is Telltale or not, but it's the Back to the Future game 30th Anniversary Edition. It plays out very much like a Telltale game, but I'm not 100% sure that it is. I'm actually going to find that out. Um, and you've also got, on the back compatible, Marlowe Briggs and the Mask of Death. Fucking know nothing about that game. Um, um, is it Telltale? Um, let's see. It is a Telltale game, yeah. Okay. So- it's a tale, you're the story, man. Yeah, so Back to the Future of the Game is a Telltale game, obviously based on the Back to the 
future movie franchise. Um, I imagine it'll be pretty good. I'll like as I said, I um, <coughs> I enjoy the Telltale games. I will probably have uh, a gander at that. Uh, hell, this might be alright. So, um, yeah. So, um, what's everybody been up to in the last little while? Getting um, really fucked off at your drive with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wanted to bring this up for the podcast. You just want to fire into it. Right. For those those who play Forza know about the drive with her system, it's like a augmented AI that takes on sort of the traits of your gamer tag. So, like, my drive with her drives kind of like me and other folks' races in single player. You know, it's a on paper a fun way to bring a kind of multiplayer element to single player games sounds great but then you get cunts out there who drive like Jamie <laughs> I'm sorry which means the AI in a game spins you out doesn't abide by sort of general racing etiquette fucking infuriating wait in the setup to this I had to restart a race because of Jamie's avatar. Because it fucking <laughs> rammed me, put me into a wall, and because I'm using those like mod cards, the one I was using was like, you know, rewind was off, full damage, no traction control, nothing. No assists whatsoever fucking ever. Mm-hmm. What a lot of fun. Until you fucking T bone me mid corner, put me into a wall and wreck the car. Anyway. Continue. <laughs> So I've got another uh, race to be your fucking character to put up with. <laughs> I, what I like, l- really like as well is that there's pretty much no way for you to not come up against my drive atar either. I, legitimately, earlier today, I almost unfriended you just to get away from <laughs> Because I keep getting you in my races. Infuriating. I just like, I've legit had cleaner races online. That says it all. See the thing ow, is, ow, is that ow, ow, ow. the thing is, it's really strange though, Alex. Is that like there's a very particular like? Do you know what I've actually just realised as well? I've never actually played that Forza. So that Drivatar data must carry across for all Forza games. It does. Um, when you sync, when you first like launch Forza Seven, uh, it syncs like the last two Horizons, Forza Five and Forza Six. Right. Okay. So it's got my Horizon data, which is completely different to anything else, just FYI. And um, and it's got, like, my other data there as well. Yeah. That's pretty mad, actually. That's quite a cool thing, though, at the same time. That is it. I don't know. I think it's a really cool system, and it's definitely a lot better in 7 than it was in 5, which Mm. wouldn't be hard since 5 was the first time it came came about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But holy shit, is it fucking, like... It's ball breaking because I, I have the uh, driver's hard difficulties turned up quite a bit as well. Because I, I like a challenge. Yeah, because you can um, you can like sort of affect exactly how good the driver tars are anyway. Like they they have yeah. traits from they have traits from the actual human that it kind of comes from. Mm. But at the same time, it's it is still an AI. Yeah. So, so it, it's taking like your aggression and put it with AI speed, mm-hmm. which is a pain in the ass. Let's let's be real here. Because mm-hmm. like, but then again, it. And you go. No, no, continue, my friend. I was gonna say is like, um, as I mentioned in the chat the other day, like I I thought Stephen had been playing a Forza game recently because I got his driver on the game. Mm-hmm. But as it turns out, the only Forza he's played is a brief bit of five when it was on Games of Gold. Mm-hmm. Um, which was interesting to see because his driver tar drove actually really well. It was you know pretty consistent on lines. Didn't really hit much. Ran, ran at the back of it like on the braking ones. But that could have been just because I got on the brakes too early. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I always think that like it's... Um... It is, it's it's a kind of shaky system. Like, the more that you drive, the kind of more random almost it becomes because... It like, sinks. The, 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 the more you play the game, the more it sinks, the better it, like, actually learns how you drive. Yeah, the more it sort of works everything out. 
Mm. Like it's it's a weird thing. Like don't get me like it's I like it. I think it's a, a it's quite a good system because it just has yeah. it just has like a kind of degree of sort of uniqueness about it mm. that I quite like. And you, you always know for a fact that you're going to get you know some kind of you're going to get like a, a more unique result from that. Yeah. As opposed to just having AI in your game. Mm. See, I liked in Forza 5 you could switch it off, like you could have just the regular AI. Yeah, but it seems like they're kind of like, no, we you know, we want you to experience this yeah. system. Uh, I can't see any way to turn it off in Forza 7. Um, just as I was discussing that, I got ran off the track by a different driver, but because they're so like strict about their lines, if you try and go around one in mid-corner, they will just plow into you. Mm-hmm. Which is a pain in the hoop because in Forza three and four, if you sort of pass one mid corner, they would slow down a little bit to actually let you pass rather than run you or spin you. Yeah, but they're they're way more sort of they're way more sort of not they are aggre- they are more aggressive. Um, yes. They're just they're just less likely to sort of like back off in corners. Like they don't act in that sense. They don't really act like real drivers. They don't actually have a before the driver tar system became kind of how it is now. I always felt like they didn't drive particularly like <coughs> real people. It was kind of mm. like if you got in front of them, like they drove really, really well and really, really fast, and they were just like, "We're going to win this race." And as soon as you got in front of them, they were just like, "Nah, you're going to win the race." Like they yeah. just kind of, they just kind of gave up at that point. But is that when you play online? If you try and take someone mid corner, they'll again they'll back off. Because uh, but that's mainly just because they don't want to have the hassle and the spin outs and everything else that. Well, yeah, because if you if you get a hit, you'll. Sp- if someone tries to pass you and you try and fucking block them, there's a very good chance you'll end up facing the rank fucking way. Yeah. Which is a pain in the hoop. But that's the element of it that I would like to see implemented in the driver tiles where it actually becomes a bit more realistic. Don't be wrong, like... Uh, what do you want to call it? Gran Turismo. The last Gran Turismo I played was pretty... Well, I mean, that's more of a sim than Forza is, let's be honest here. Yeah. For, it was really for, good for that. For, like, Forza is like sim light. Yeah, it's like it's an arcade simulator. Is probably the best way I could describe it. Mm-hmm. It's not like don't me wrong, Gran Turismo isn't you know Project Cars heavy sim, but it's still pretty good. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's not have a fucking Forza podcast. Let's digress. Uh, uh, do you mean again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I had a bit of a, a mishap before coming on to record this. Oh yeah, you, you you mentioned this and said I was going to save it for the podcast. So yeah. What's what's your so, what's, what's your happy? Hat? It's regarding my microphone. Right. Yeah. And uh, I went to go and plug it in, and I keep it like away from my desk. I keep it on a a shelf, and uh, turns out when we were cleaning up, it had went the cable that goes into the computer side, like that connects the mic up, was uh, lying in a tub of nail polish remover. Oh, oh. nice. So uh, I had to. Th- throw the cable out and then it was a blind panic to find some way of being able to be on the podcast this week I'm guessing I've managed to put my Xbox microphone to the PC using a couple of cables and that seems to be working I guess you you do sound pretty good so I thought my for a second there I thought maybe the the nail portion would have cleaned up your connection really well But yeah, you actually you actually do sound really clean. It's the one thing I'll say, like your mic always sounds really good, Ross, but now that you're on a different one, I've gotten to say and really I noticed that you don't have a like much buzz at all about you. Yeah. yeah. Like whereas that was something that I noticed quite a bit was that you had a bit of a buzz problem going on. Like not a buzz, massive buzz, buzz. Ma- not a massive, yeah. massive one, but like enough that you would notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you're aware that it's well. You're aware that it's there, but it doesn't really bother you, but as soon as you hear it without it, it's kind of like, oh yeah, this is how it could be. Yeah, you're just like, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> this is just how it could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of those grass solid greener sort of scenarios. Yeah. don't know why the, the blue microphone has a buzz to it. It's maybe the setting I've got it on or something. It's also just maybe just the kind of actual microphone that it is. Mm-hmm. It might also be that um, that microphone records through a USB A to B connection. Could be. Whereas Right now I'm oxed in. Yeah, I mean that will always kind of change. You're typically going to get a better signal with an aux in. So it's but, probably that. Or yeah. something I mean, to do with that. I mean, mine's goes uh, mine's goes USB to 
Well, I suppose mine's is USB to USB A technically. Mm. But are you not doing it through an actual audio box or like an actual DI box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, see, that's that, where, that's where that, that, that unites up. Is instead of like as for, as far as I understand it, instead of like Ross's computer having to do it, that box does it for you. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. Plus, that is a professional audio, like, direct input, so. Yeah, I've never actually, like, because it's typically always me that records the podcast, I never actually really hear it back myself. Mm. So, it's always one of those, like, I actually wonder what it sounds like to, um, I actually wonder what it kind of sounds like to anybody else. Yeah. It's not recommending that I set up a city here, but I know fucking know what I'm doing. Do you, though? Um, I do actually. Uh, Ross will tell you I'm actually really quite good at this game. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the good folk of Atlantis thought that as well. <laughs> now, like I was, like I was genuinely like, do you know what? I'm going to be really fucking terrible at this game. It it legitimately took me one game pretty much getting like taught turn for turn by Ross how to play it and what to do, mm. but. Now, like, after that for a little while, um, it, honestly, it was, it's been completely fine. Like, I've gotten into the swing of it pretty fast. I think after that one game that me and you played, Ross, like, I pretty much went mad for, like, actually, like, diving into the real meta of the game and learning the mechanics inside and out. Um, so it's just like I now know how best to actually speed up like how well I'm doing or whatever else not I was, I was about that way with Starcraft um, yeah I picked it up pretty quickly I was never like South Korean Jeff style good mm-hmm. but it was, it was alright should probably pick up Starcraft 2 at some point I just keep on but like, it's uh... free at this point in time, I just keep experimenting with, like, various, like, play styles in this game. Because there's, there's multiple different ways that you can play and experience um, a Civ game. Like, mm-hmm. uh, typically a, a match will have a load of variants of every kind of play style. Um, mm-hmm. So you so you'll have a bit of war, you'll have a bit of culture, you'll have a bit of science going on, you'll have like pretty much most of the shit that you can do going on at any one time. Um, but there's so many ways you can kind of f- flex that a little bit. Like you can sort of adapt like how well those things work for you. Like particularly like for me, Ross, I've started to really favour doing culture and science as my way to play like culture yeah. culture and science and kind of focus on my economics of the uh of the game rather than just like downright go for pretty much whatever was recommended by like the auto helper which just kind of gives you a really good grounding because that was kind of how i was playing for the first little while because i had not a fucking clue what i was doing mm-hmm Um, Because it is quite a lot to take in at first, but it's nowhere near as big as I actually thought it was. Like, I thought this was a way more intensive game. I mean, it can be if you want it to be. It can be, because you can... It goes to the level you want to go to. Exactly, because you can can take it, like, pretty much as far as you want to take it. In the sense that... In the sense that, like, if you want to make it really overly complicated, you turn off all the assists, turn down everything, and turn up the difficulty, I'd like, basically, to what I would assume is meant to be, like, the actual standard, proper, like, this is how the game was intended to be played difficulty, which is pretty much everything maxed out. Um, and genuinely make it very difficult to create a thriving civilization because people constantly need stuff and want stuff. Um, and it becomes like quite a it does become a very difficult game but for the most part like i mean i'm kind of slowly ramping up my difficulty like i fucking beyond dominated some ai like the last couple of games that i've had playing so i know that i don't actually really need to worry about um 
how well I'm doing even in the early game like I'm clearly getting the hang of it enough so every like every single time I play I ramp up my difficulty a little bit more um, just to see like how well I do when the game is more weighted against me straight away because that's effectively all your difficulty actually like affects. Like it affects yeah. the hap- it affects like you've got like different things that you can do in the game. Like there's uh, there's like a happiness thing that you've got to keep an eye on. So like the happier your people are, um, it's it's necessary to keep your cities growing. So it's like um, for example, in, in this right now, like I'm playing on like the medium difficulty. So like just right slap bang in the middle. Um, of all the different difficulties, and it's I'm gaining twelve happiness from my difficulty level. Whereas, like if you actually play on the hardest difficulty level, you don't get any happiness just from playing the game. You have to generate it all for yourself. It sounds like a really just like a really complex version of Fallout Shutters. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, kind of. Like, it's it's pretty mad, like how big a game it is but how small a game it is at the same time like it's it is exactly as ross said it, it can be as big or as small as you want it to be it's a really mm-hmm. fucking good game though like i was put off playing it for such a long time and now i don't actually see why um because it's it's genuinely like it, it actually kind of it appeals to my strategy sort of side because it is kind it's it's kind of real-time strategy but it's not because it's turn-based strategy like it's all based in turn-based combat and turn-based okay. mechanics. Um, you know, you don't actually have any like you know fast-paced like how many fucking clicks per second can you do to actually um, you know get this to work for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because like that's what quite a lot of games kind of turn into. Well, no, no zerg rushes is what you're telling me. Uh, no, no zerg rushes. No, I, I, I get what you mean by that. Fucking point. Well. Um. It's it's just kind of weird because like there's more sort of reward for the person that likes playing a strategy game very thought out, very uh, very thoroughly. Because mm. like typically, like I mean that that is how I like to play a, an actual real time strategy game. Is I like to play it very thought out and I like to be very methodical with what I'm doing. And really think about exactly how long each research is going to take and stuff like that. But because it's real time strategy, you kind of have to do that on the fly really fast. And because I can't always work out what exactly is the best thing for me to be doing, and I can't micromanage, like sometimes I just get distracted by actually watching a battle. Mm. Um, so it's one of those things where because I can get quite distracted by that quite quickly, um, I kind of find myself going, oh fuck, I should have been building this, I should have done that, I should have done this over here, and now I'm fucked because I've, I've done everything too slow. Yeah. Um, but you're not punished as much for that in this game because it is all about like actually taking your time, mm. thinking about what your next <clears throat> move is. Like It tells you, like, you, you get a massive like fucking world sprawling map and it tells you, like, this is how many moves it's going to take for your unit to get from here to here. Um, this is roughly what you can expect this battle outcome to be, but obviously it's a little bit random because it's still based on terrain. It's based on experience of your units. Um, it's it's awesome, but it's complicated at the same time. Yeah. Like, it's pretty good, though. I mean, I, I, like, I like it a lot. Like, it's really fucking keeping me busy anyway speaking of like strategies in games and like just recent terrain that's what reminded me of this right okay. uh, i'm gonna send something into the badgeman chat uh, and i want ross to say whether or not he'd be willing to implement this into a, a game that we all play out with badger and pals on paper it's dungeon dragon stuff right oh all right okay right okay i was like what the fuck no, do I've, we play? I've put this into the i put this into the the badgeman chat now, if, Ross, if you can read it out and then say whether or not you'd be willing to implement this. <laughs> I've just seen the picture and I'm already loving it. Right. <laughs> Spell failure roll for random effect. You summon one D100 corgis. <laughs> Corgi swarm conjuration. Range 60 feet. Area of effect 30 foot radius circle. Duration up to a minute. Spell resistance no. 
This spell summons 10 D10 Corgis into the area of effect. The Corgis have no combat stats and cannot make attacks when summoned. All creatures in the area of the effect must succeed at a wisdom saving throw or gain the fascinated condition until the spell ends. They're too busy playing with the adorable Corgis to, to do anything. If more than 25 Corgis are summoned, this saving throw is made at minus 2. If more than 50 Corgis are summoned, this roll is made at disadvantage. Catfolk have advantage on this roll. Creatures who failed the save may have may make a new save at the end of each turn. Creatures who make the save are immune to the Corgi Swarm until their next long rest. But yeah. <laughs> I like how there was just that like awkwardly long pause and then just yes. <laughs> like I only bring it up because it's like this conjuration I believe was I just kinda want the spell. <laughs> <laughs> What I quite what I quite like about us playing D and D is that like anything that's vaguely stupid and you're just like Ross will never go for this. He's he's just like yeah I'll allow it. Yeah, there's there's like, a lot of stupid stuff I bring up that I I bring it up just to see if I can get away with it more than now. <laughs> like just summoning a sexy rock golem to fucking distract the rock golem or fighting. <laughs> yeah, it was I a stroke of genius if you ask me. It wasn't but... a stroke of genius. <laughs> Well, what was um, that? What about the other? Um, what about the other puzzle that you set up for us ages ago, Ross? Like before, I think it was even before Alex fucking joined playing us, um, where um, there was like this room that was full of. I'm trying to remember exactly how the setup goes. It was oh, the two thing. rooms. Yeah, the two rooms. One. Yeah. Was like, so what one, it was? One was. There was two lava. rooms. Oh no, no, that was that was my first session. That was yeah. So. There was two rooms, one of which had a lever that would raise the floor. And so, like, one room was filled with lava, and underneath the lava, there was a platform that would raise. Mm -hmm. But you had to stand in the other room and hold down a lever, like a crank, to do it. But when you did that, that room started to fill with lava. So it was designed to sort of be like, right, how do we do this without sacrificing one of the group? Mm -hmm. And you came up with a fantastic... And I couldn't even like say no because it was just so fantastic way of sort of solving that wriggle, riddle. Well, yeah, fantastic. Solving that wriggle. <laughs> well, yeah, you had to wriggle your way out of that situation. Good save. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember. You spawned. What was it? Was it a bear? We spawned the bear. You spawned yeah. a bear using meat because yeah, one because... of you had that spell. Yeah, well, no, like, it was. It was Jamie in a had ritual call book. a wild, I'm sure. It was in a ritual book. Oh, oh yeah, it was a special book. But um, you guys, if you had what an animal would eat, you could summon it. Yeah. So you summoned the bear and sacrificed the bear. Yeah, summoned a spectral bear to go in and turn the crank on behalf of the group. No, it was the... We had to get the bear to stand on the platform. Oh, was it just standing sure. on a platform? Yeah, we just had to get it to stand somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was just standing on it. But yeah, no, that like, was fantastic. As soon as, as soon as you posed that thing, like my brain just instantly went, "I know how to do this." <laughs> the bear. Stark contrast to how it dealt with a fucking like just deadly door. Oh, you see some see He's sometimes though, like <laughs> see sometimes though like as soon as Ross puts something um, in in D and I'm just like, I know where he's going with this. I think I could figure out how to make this work for us. And see other times he does th things and I'm just like, nope, I'm out. Don't know what the fuck he's yeah. doing. <laughs> it was, one of the best ones was um, of like random things that just happened in the game was when Alex and Jamie were sneaking around this mansion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Alex opened the door to find one of the um, service girls had found him and you tried to roll to attack her, like surprise attack. Yeah. <laughs> And she fucking RKO'd your ass. And <laughs> yeah, you're fucking an inch of your I life. Get, I get shit kicked by a fucking like, little girl. <laughs> it was fucking fantastic. My, my, my character by, by all rates should be fucking dead by now, man. Yeah, your character is surprisingly re resilient to, to an extent. <laughs> yeah, like... I can never, like... It's, it's actually pretty good. Like, I can never make the, the stupid little roles that have no real consequence. I mean, that, that could have had real consequence, but we, we got through it. Thankfully, Jamie, like, shanked her or some shit. But, like, when it actually comes to shit that's important, I seem to clutch it, which is always nice. Yeah. 
It's like fucking annoying. Like it's funny. It's, it's, it's <laughs> like, like a constant for our group, though, because like there's so many times where it's just like, right, this next role actually means something, and you're just like, oh, fuck, it better be good, it better be good. And even if it's kind of bad, we still manage to kind of fumble our way through it. But any time there's just like an absolutely like bullshit nothing role, you're just like, oh yeah, this doesn't mean anything. We'll we'll do this no problem. Oh fuck, <laughs> like, you'll fucking you'll not win it or some shit. Yeah, absolutely mm. natural one straight away, and you're just like, well, fuck. <laughs> or what is it? It was like um, it was to do with that uh, golem. It was like you came up with like a, like right, we're gonna spawn a sexy golem at the top of the stairs. <laughs> it's spectral. So that when he goes to pump it, he falls down the stairs and dies. And I was like, right, oh, okay. Lad. Right, I was like, right, okay, this is going to be pretty difficult. So you're going to need to, you know, get quite a high roll. You got the high roll, but then you fucked up and Stephen went under the thing. <laughs> so it fell on no, top no, of Stephen. I, I, and then... I didn't fuck up. Stephen went to fucking attack it while it was falling the thing around just letting it do its thing. <laughs> anyway, somebody fucked up. And uh, it was great. Yeah, that led to... <laughs> Stephen had to make like fucking what like five seven throws to get up, then he fucking died yeah. or some shit. I'm sure he's I'm pretty sure he's alive now, but he was uh, he's alive now. Like he, he, yeah, was, he had to he make was a fucking so close to death. I it was a negative HP. He had to make a fucking save and throw. But the mm. thing is, is like like all right now, he, he might shout at me when this podcast comes out, but it fucking annoys me. His communication is so fucking random because sometimes he'll communicate every idea that he's that he's having. And I'm just mm. like, right, this is good. We know what's going on. The teams are set up. Everybody knows their role. Um, and then, like, on, on that particular encounter, like, a fucking boss as well. He was really, really quiet. And at one point, he just went, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was like, when did See, this I, happen? I kind of love that because then I get to play with that. Yeah. You get to try and play on, like, when he may or may not be, you know, mm. communicative. <laughs> It's like the same with um, Shawnee's character that we introduced in the last session. I was like letting her play her own little <laughs> mini game in amongst the game that you guys were playing. Yeah, like you, and our you, first you encounter, guys, I fucking bottled her. <laughs> like you guys were just kind of like you guys were swapping notes back and forward, and I, I, I think I just wrote you a note at one point that was just like, "Can I play too?" <laughs> yeah, because you guys, you guys were exploring a crashed airship, like the wreck of an airship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I basically wrote her this big long thing like before the session started. They basically said, "Look, this airship you've t- like thinking that it's your home. This is where you live. You were on this ship when it crashed. Um, you can choose to fuck with them. You can set up traps before they get there. Things like that." And I was like, "You know," and as they go, you can write me notes and saying, "Like, I want to reset that trap so that when they come back through the area, they get hit again," mm-hmm. or. Like, you can try and fuck with them and things like that. And I basically just handed them that note, and then at the bottom I wrote, you roleplay. Do what you like. I'll let it go. So, like, Actually, everything she that roleplayed ha- that, that whole, like, part fucking beautifully. Yeah, she did. She got um, a bonus level for that. Level up. Yeah. Deserved it. Level up. Level up. But I love... I, it's because it's something we don't do an awful lot of, is the roleplay inside of it. No, we don't. So I was like, right, I'm really going to try and get her to focus on it because she's new to it. Mm-hmm. And if she starts doing it, maybe you guys will start doing it as well. Yeah. That's a, well, that's I mean, a... to be fair, I think me and Jess play off each other quite well, like, just in terms of our characters. <laughs> yeah, you two just fucking snarky bitch each other, though. Yeah, it's great. Well, I mean, I, I fucking... I worked that in my backstory as to why I just fucking, like, why I'm that way with Jessica? Just because it's I just I just don't like clerics. Yeah. <laughs> Been too long yeah. since we played. It has. Fucking, it's always too long since we played. No, no. Like we got lives, man. Yeah, we do. I was just thinking about that recently as well. Is like it's it's great that like it's great that I've got like my new sort of big PC game and like I'm playing fucked on a sieve right now. Like, it keeps me busy, like, all the fucking time. And, like, I've got my kind of big Xbox game with Destiny. Like, mm. the fucking... The first expansion pass drops, like, fucking yep, Tuesday. Yeah, comes out this month. Yeah, yeah well, it, it comes out when this podcast Next week, comes out. yeah. Um, I should probably buy it. Yeah, well, um, Xbox... Um, funnily enough, this leads me on to talking about an actual Microsoft Xbox update. 
Xbox just added a new thing. You know how for fucking ages you've been able to do it for like Steam and stuff. Yeah. But um, on Xbox, you can now buy something as a gift for somebody else, and you just need to be friends with them and yes. just put you just put in their gamer tag, and they just get the game. They they just get Ooh. emailed. They just get emailed a code, and you they also get a message on their Xbox Live with the code in it, and right. you, you can just redeem whatever it is. Like um, Shawnee um, said. Check your emails at one point to me today. We were just sitting watching like Achievement Hunter videos. And I was like, right. And I had an email from the Microsoft store that had a code for the Destiny expansion pass, like one and two. And I was just like, oh, cool. And she was just like, yeah, it's part of your birthday, but it's out like Tuesday. So I figured, you know, want to play it? And I was just like, yeah, sure. That sounds good. But it's like, a re- it's a really good thing. I don't know if it works for games that you already own. I think it has to be something that you specifically set as being like, I want this to be a gift from from the get go. Remains to be seen, I guess. <laughs> Jamie, yo, what up? Found an interesting game on Steam the other day, right? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Which goes back to the D and D conversation we were just having. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's called Tabletop Simulator. Oh, oh yes, yes. I've seen quite a lot about this. Yeah. Yeah. You can basically play D and D. On your computer, and you can have it's. You can set a table up. You can set like custom characters up. You can actually have like a DM screen. So like the like, for example, me, I could have my own bit of the board, mm-hmm. and I can set stuff up that you guys can't see because it's only visible on my screen and things like that. And it's like beyond ridiculously customizable as well because um, the entire thing is set up um, to emulate what it is actually like playing with your friends yeah you know, so like in, in a tabletop fashion so literally like pretty much anything goes like yep. if if you can fucking think it you can make it fucking happen mm-hmm. like i was oh, watching was a video that online clients like roll 20 or something like that yeah that's another way of doing it wasn't that all text-based though that was all text-based yeah, yeah. well or it was at one point i'm mean, sure you can chat through it as well yeah but the tabletop simulator, like, it goes as far as, like, I've been watching a guy on Just YouTube. Yeah. He's playing it, but he's doing, like, a uh, Star Wars version of D&D. Right, okay. That's and like he's got, cool, like, actually. he's got his party, like, they're on a, a desert planet, and he's, like, actually got, like, you know, a town on the map, and they're going around it. And, like, as he's exploring, as they're exploring, he's, like, putting down stormtroopers, saying, like, all right, okay, you guys turn the corner, and there's a stormtrooper patrol, and, like... Because you guys are associated with the rebels, you guys can either attack or do things. And like he puts like little droids down on the map and things like that. Mm. And he's like, he was like, right, okay. So one of them was speaking to um, a merchant trying to like find out if there was any like um, jobs going on, like rumors or that. And then he was like, no, no, no. But I did find out that um, the Empire have hired a landing zone, like for the next month or so. And then once he knew that. He, the DM put down a shuttle on the zone and put like two stormtroopers next to it. He's like, you can go for the shuttle if you want. You can get off the planet that way. So like, it was kind of cool to see it have like visual representations and he had like a TIE fighter fly over the top at one point and that. It was great. And can you, like, do you have to kind of, like, is it quite difficult to code that shit in or do you just basically just kind of use whatever you fucking like to be able to do it? You pretty much use whatever you like. So he did a video on how he did it and it's basically you go onto the Steam Workshop and find, like, people upload them as mods, like, different yeah. packages of things you can have. Yeah, yeah. So he was showing us, like, right, if you go to the Star Wars one, here it is. If you download all, all these things, you'll get... So, like, here's, you know, Rebels and Empire era models you can use. Mm-hmm. Here's droids you can use. Here's clone troopers. Here's, you know, a variation of aliens and things like that you can use. And you basically just download it from the Steam Workshop and then bring it up in your game. There's, like, a drop-down menu you can do. That's just really, awesome. really awesome. Especially, like, I fucking love games that have the Steam Workshop support because there's just so much shit that can just add infinitely to your game mm-hmm. straight away. Like, you just you have to do nothing and there's just so much you can get from it right away. Like, I absolutely fucking love, like... Not so much for Civ, Ross. I know that it's got an extensive fucking workshop... But most of the stuff, especially for Civ Five, because we we're kind of playing last generation Civ, yeah, um, just because it was fucking dirt cheap. 
uh, unless you've got all the DLC and all the actual like Sid Meier's like proper expansions for it. Um, yeah, that one's a bit limiting. It's very limiting in the fact that the Steam Workshop for it really only has like the stuff that actually uses a lot of the base stuff from actually having like the expansion packs. So if you mm-hmm. just got the base game as me and you do, Shawnee managed to fuck up somehow and bought the one with all the expansions. Um, yeah. But if you've got the base game, just like like literally just as we do, um, then it's dead easy just to fucking be like, right, you know, this is this is what we've got. This is all we've got. But actually finding stuff that works for it is more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare that. Just because, like, yeah. I, guess, I guess it makes sense though. Like, if you're if you're gonna make a workshop mod. What if people are really into the game? Most people tend to have all the expansions for it. So yeah, but yeah. I was thinking if it continues that we kind of struggle to find time to play D and D together, tabletop simulator could maybe be our answer. Yeah, it could be the it way that could could be a save because it yeah. doesn't it doesn't take a lot to run it. So even Alex, your laptop would be able to do it. It doesn't mainly catch fire. Hmm. It's just one corner. Yeah. Post well, marshmallows on that'd be great. Question, key question, might not yes. be necessarily relevant because potentially me and Sean, I guess you can have more than one player per machine, I guess. Um, I'm not sure. I would need to look up that. Uh-huh. But your question, go on. Is, would it work on Mac? Does it work on Mac? Um, if you can get Steam on a Mac, you can um, I imagine so. You can get Steam on the Oh, the Sabrina the Workgun. Yes. Yeah. Um, Shawnee, like, she's been playing Civ with us. Like, that's mm-hmm. done. That's done, done through Mac Steam. I imagine she probably could. Um, just get her to look up Tabletop Simulator on her store. If it's there, then yeah, she can play. Uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll certainly ask her anyway. Because I would quite like to do a Star Wars version of d and I think that would, would be a lot of fun. I would, I would, I would like to play it. No, yeah, because probably see if you use that as like a one shot or something like that, would be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I like, I still really want to run my D and D session as well, which we're struggling to find time for. But mine's is geared more towards a smaller player base. Mm-hmm. So, like, if we could only get, like, for example, Ross, say you, Jess, Stephen, and Shawnee available, like we're semi regularly available all together, just that group. So. I love um, how your 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 idea of smaller player base is like the usual players, <laughs> minus me. Minus, yeah, minus you. <laughs> well, to be fair, like in a lot of ways, like Shawnee's dead easy to catch available now, which yeah. um, her her new job, by the way, is phenomenal for he, her being available. It is ridiculous how often she'll fucking be available. Yeah, yeah, like she, she's, a new job. She, she's um yeah she started her new job on Thursday. I want to say it was Thursday. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, she's working nine till five, four days a week. Not necessarily Monday to Friday. She can work the weekends. Her days are never set, but it's only ever nine till five that she works. And she works nine till, um, I believe it's like nine till six in the summer. And there's potential mm-hmm. of her going five day a week as well. See, um, I'm fairly easy to get as well because I work six till three every day. Yeah, like, I'm a pain in the ass because my shifts are literally any yeah, yeah. fucking time. Um, although that generally, as long as it's a Sunday, you can usually catch me as well because I tend to be off Sundays. Not necessarily the same, but um, it's e- yeah. it's easier for me to get Sundays off. Yes. Than not, uh, just because pretty much every single person in my office wants to work a Sunday uh, because it's better money. I suppose. Um. But yeah, um, like I mean, I'm I'm also switching jobs. Uh, soon as well so the likelihood of actually catching me um, available will probably be improving because although I'll still be shift based um, because I won't actually be having such a massive travel time to my job Mm. um, it won't impact me as much yeah Um, just because like I was thinking about that the other day and I'm like oh I'm still I'm still based in shifts and then I was like but actually if I think about it I'm based in shifts now I work 37 and a half hours a week, but I actually spend about 45 to 50 hours a week 
working, including my travel time. Mm. Whereas I'm about to work 40 hours a week, but I will legitimately work 40 hours a week. Like, it'll take yeah. me less than five minutes to be to and from my work. Oh, yeah, I do. Everyone wants so, life, really. Yeah. So it's just, like, it's just one of them kind of things where I'm just like, well, do you know what? Like, that's fine. I'm kind of all right with that. Like, more than all right with that, actually. Mm. So... Yeah, I really like that. I'm playing a very strange game of Civ right now. Yeah? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm liking it. I feel a little bit slow in it. But that's for a very particular reason. Because I'm playing for the cultural victory. Mm. This time mm-hmm. round. Which Isn't is... everyone playing for the cult- cultural victory, to be fair? Well, I mean, yeah, in life, sure. I'm playing the Empire at War now. Are you playing Empire at War, are you? Um, yeah, I'm still playing Forza. What? Do you know what? I haven't actually been massively back to it. I'm really upset about it. I've it. been playing through all the mods. Yeah, I want to go and play like all the mods. Like, all the mods in the world. I really do. It's a lot of mods. It's really actually, it's, not, like, actually. it's 48, to yeah. be precise. A lot. It is a lot, but you know, not impossibly a lot. Damn it. Yeah, I'm playing very aggressively in this campaign. You make me but, uh, but yeah, like I'm I I quite like that like it's I guess it's kind of a little bit like um it's kind of a little bit like um Empire in a way that everybody plays a little bit differently. Like every single person in um in Civ plays really fucking similarly. Like, they all have exactly the same things apart from, a, like, a few like, a proper, really few little differences. Like, uh, typically they have, like, one special or particularly special type of unit that really only makes a difference in a particular era or a, in a particular time. <clears throat> but and yeah, it's just like like a lot of the time those don't make massive differences to the way that the game goes. Yeah. But if you play into them, it kind of makes sense. Every single game I've been playing so far, I haven't actually been playing into the cultural strength. So this time round, I was just like, Do you know what? I'm going to try and play culturally. I'm going to try and go for a cultural victory. Um, so I'm actually playing France right now. All right, so you're going to give up. Playing Napoleon. Well, they've got a very interesting cultural trait that they basically get um, they get extra culture um, every single turn until they discover steam power and then their culture starts to kind of back down to normal. Oh, fair enough. Um, which is a really weird thing, which is why I'm playing very particularly that my science is really not very high at all. I'm not researching things particularly fast or figuring stuff out. I'm mm. actually the least evolved civilization in this game so far. But I already have um, nearly two complete social uh, social policy trees, and if you get, you need to get five social policy branches completely, and then you can construct a utopia project, which basically brings all the civilizations together, and you win basically by amalgamating all the civilizations together. Oh, okay. Um. So that's how I'm choosing to play in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I, I've wanted to do that kind of cultural victory for a while. Like, I've wanted to try playing like it. But I've just never really had the the opportunity to try and play like that in any particular one. I think it's just purely because it it's a very particular way to play. But it's like I've yeah. I've been against the the kind of cultural significance every single time. Like, mm-hmm. for example, Persia, um, it's it had like it's got a cultural bonus which helps you build a dominant army. Yeah. Um, I won by science as Persia, and like in our three-way game that me, Ross, and Shawnee are playing, I'm playing as Egypt, 
which is supposed to be kind of cultural or money focused and again I'm focusing on science like it just doesn't play into the strength so this time I'm trying to play into the strength by um, by actually kind of reading quite intensely like what exactly the culture does specialise in and then trying to play gearing towards that Fair enough. Um, it's 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 interesting when you actually like when you actually start trying to do things properly in a game. It's weird how much it fucking changes things. Yeah. Because yeah. like if you get into, I guess you could always go for a very particular style in Civ, especially. I wouldn't know. Uh, it's kind of the same as um, kind of the same as like any other. Uh, game like you you can have a particular way that you play like maybe for example in starcraft you always play like a rush game so you always go for like an early victory and if that doesn't work out you've got a weaker late game because you pretty much always try and go for that standard oh yeah my like if if my initial like because i always always to play zerg and uh starcraft if my initial rush failed i was fucked i had had nothing to fall back on yeah whereas like in um like if you take like Halo Wars for example mm. uh, I mean Ross will tell you I'm a big fan in Halo Wars of building up a like ridiculously sized army yeah mm. you are and that tends to be kind of how I go I kind of play a very backed off a very very defensive game up until the point where I could get a massive army like fo- like up and focused um, aye and then I play really fucking aggressively with pretty much all of my units bunched together to make like an unstoppable mm. force. Fair enough. And that's just how I play it because I can, <laughs> like pretty much. There's no real. If it's like, what works, man. It's there's no real big reason behind it. It's just how I like to play that game, and especially because the Xbox doesn't really lend itself well to, to real time managing. No, it really doesn't. Like, multiple different groups of units. So, if I just focus all of my fucking attention on one massive cluster of units, it becomes really fucking, like... It becomes a really easy game to manage, and that gives you an advantage in a whole different sort of way. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Focusing largely on wonders in this game at the moment. Wonderful. Wonderful, indeed. (laughs) <laughs> for those not familiar with Civ, wonders are sort of like the you get natural wonders, things like Krakatoa, Mount Fuji, um the Bermuda Triangle, I think is one, Great Barrier Reef is one. Um Fountain of Youth. Fountain of Youth is one that's very, very rare to come across. Yep. If I can, as you would expect, I guess. Mm. Um and you can also build wonders so like the non-natural wonders in the world like like stonehenge like stonehenge the pyramids um the hanging gardens uh the colossus uh there's there's fucking loads of them and loads of them unlock in different ways uh throughout the game um and every time that you build one you get like a you get a permanent benefit from it for example I'll read you like what happens if you build the pyramids. Um, the imp- uh, you get improved construction speed by twenty five percent, and two workers appear near the city that it's built in. Mm. So, especially early game, because you can get the pyramids as a wonder fairly early on. That's a really good thing to build straight away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's like um, Angkor Wat that you can build which is culture and gold costs of acquiring new tiles are reduced by 25% in every city. So if you want to be very expansive, um, it's really fucking easy to really... really If you're playing, say, Persia, for example, that would be beneficial. Yeah, exactly. So it's like um, Persia, Persia basically, like, there's one that contributes to golden ages and stuff like that as well. Yeah, here's one. Um, um, Chichen Itza, which is like the sort of... Um, fucking, I forget the cultures thing, but um, uh, its benefit is that it increases the length of a golden age by fifty percent. If you're Persia, you probably want to build that because the length of your golden age is directly um, significant to um, 
like how well your army does like as Persia your army does significantly better when you're in a golden age so makes sense it, so it's just that kind of thing like you kind of play into like what your thing's traits are it's just because I'm going for the cultural victory right now so even though I'm not actually using a lot of the benefits from the wonders that I'm building I'm just building mm. them because it fucking builds up my culture of my cities like it doesn't make any fucking sense that Stonehenge and the fucking pyramids are in Paris right now for me right that's not how the world works but it means that okay. my my it, yeah, that's just it. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense, but that's just how, how it works. So, like... Can you ma- imagine that fucking standing at the top of the fucking Eiffel Tower? To your left, the pyramids. <laughs> and to your right, Stonehenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it makes no fucking sense at all, but it's just a really unique way to play because I'm going for that cultural victory this time, having all the wonders based around my cities, which are not covering a vast expanse of land. Like, I have very, very small cities. Um, mm. And really not that many... Like, I don't have any military units at all and not that much workers either. It's literally... I am just going for culture. So... Fair enough. It's very much like... Um, if I just go for that and basically make my cities... Like, culture dominant by just having all of the fucking... Wonders of the world condensed into like three small cities all linked together mm. um, I'm probably going to win the cultural victory just purely based on the benefits that that gives me over time Fair enough. From, from having that so it's it's a bizarre way but if it, it works it's just different ways to play and different ways to try and figure out like what you're actually like what would actually work in, the, in each situation like I don't think that this is probably the best way to play this game absolutely not but um, it's it's a unique way to play it, and especially on single player, uh, there's pretty much no way that anybody's gonna like kind of fuck with me, not massively anyway. Mm. Um, like I find that probably is the most amusing thing about me me and Ross's game for one, and me and, me Ross and Shawnee's game for another, because you can have an unlimited number of games running at any one time, really, and yeah. Like, we've got one just now where me, Ross, and Shawnee are playing. And it's pretty funny because we've met each other on the map now. Because you don't know where anybody else is. You start in, like, fucking 4000 BC or some shit. Like, mm-hmm. you start with fucking nothing. Like, the, the yeah, fact that you've you're got, able... You've got no idea where anything is. And you've got no idea how to do anything. Like, your people can't write. Your, your people can't read. They don't know what a calendar is. Like, you've got to fucking develop all these things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it takes a while for you to especially if you end up like finding yourself on an island where you're pretty like locked in you, yeah. you'd you literally have no idea where anybody else is on the map so it's like we've gotten to the point now where pretty much all of us are seafaring like we've gotten to the point where we can kind of like we're sort of like sort of around pirate times you know Arr. like na- naval ships are common um, we've all got naval ships that can cross great oceans and we have located where all of the different civilizations in the world are. I think I'm the only mm. one in that game that's found everybody, but I think we've all found each other at the least. So it it then becomes the sort of game of like, well, we're not naturally joined together by anything. The game mechanics say that, you know, we are playing in the same game. We're not against each other but we're not typically friends either. So we're all kind of playing this really, like, fucking backhanded game of, like, oh, like, oh I see what you've got there. That's really nice. I'm going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, Shawnee's playing that's, as that's Russia. That's world politics, man. Yeah. Shawnee's playing as Russia. I'm playing as Japan. I can't remember who Jamie's playing as. That's wh- that is what you were playing as. It was fucking driving me nuts the other night. I was trying to remember who you were playing as. I'm playing. <laughs> right, so Ross just as... taking stuff. He's just, he's just in character, man. Yeah, and I, mm-hmm. um, I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing as. Um, fuck. Um, shit. Who am I playing as? I'm playing as Egypt in that game. That's who I'm playing as. Yeah. Fucking, because Shawnee's playing as Russia. Her whole like thing is like based on like she can have a massive civilization. 
Yeah. So like, she's been like going to war with all the AI. Yeah, she's she's been really fucking warry. She's built up a massive fucking army already. Like she she's got the best civilization for kind of getting a quick start. Like her cities expand massively fast. Whereas, yeah. Like I've yeah. I've kind of gotten the best start in that I'm the most peaceful civilization because I ended up on a massive island, like really massive island, and I got it all to myself essentially loads of natural resources and nobody to fucking bother me so it just let me build like a really expansive empire and i don't really have to worry about actually sharing it with anybody so whereas like shawnee ended up on a land where she was directly fighting with another civilization almost straight away so like your your starting tiles like that you kind of get randomly put on at the start can massively affect you like I started a single player game the other day, Ross, immediately fucking backed out of it and reloaded another game because I am um, you know how occasionally you get one like like literally one tile in the ocean? Yeah. That like is land and the rest of it is just water. That's you on one start. of them. That's where I started and I was like, it's gonna take me sixteen turns before I can even build a boat to fucking get off of this fucking island. No, I'm not playing this game. <laughs> I backed out and tried to get another one. Just because I was just like that, fu- that fucked me so hard straight away, and I was just like, "This is such a shit start." And yeah, that's a pretty pushy start. Like, typ- typically they're pretty balanced. Like, the game's really, really good at balancing them. But it's mm. just like it's one of those that every now and then you'll just get a really random one where you're just like, "What the fuck is this all about?" That's kind of the way we sort of random generation anything. Yeah, if you that's look, true. look at. Minecraft is a great explanation for that because fucking like, let's, let's be real, everyone's played it. Yeah, pretty much anyway. You just know that when you load a world, it is a real roll of dice, but sometimes you get a proper fucking winner. Other times it's shit. Yeah, other times it's like, uh, there's not really anything massively of note in this world and uh, this isn't so good and I've not got access to this here. Aye. So you just kinda, you're just kind of just kind of sitting there like, yeah, what did I do? It was a lot more noticeable on the Xbox just because of how the world was like locked in. On the PC, not so much because you could just wander off and the world would reinvent itself as you went to a better extent. But yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd deleted you know, countless worlds on the, the 360 just because fucking they, they were shit. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Monty Zoomers went to war with me. A nice one. No, not really. I don't understand why he went to war with me, though. Like, he, he had, like, he opened his borders to me, he had a research agreement. He was proposing all these things. Like, he, didn't, he didn't actually... He went... Like, he, he didn't really, like, typically do anything that was actually against me. And it, he just he was just kind of like, do you know what? You're having a really good time. I want what you've got. So he's went to war with me. That's, that's how empires are started, man. Pretty much. I want your stuff. Empires start and f- start and fall because of the way that these things work. Yes. But yeah, I mean, the fucking don't get me wrong. I, I I like I love this game. I love how fucking expansive it is and how like weirdly intensive it is. Like it's not fast paced by any stretch of the imagination. Like fucking how mm. long have we been waiting for some ter- turns to end in our multiplayer games? Ross? Oh, so so long. But it's just like it's one of those where you're just like, well, do you know what? Yeah, it's not particularly fast, but fuck, is it fun? Because you're just like, what's going to happen next? Like, there's so many things that can and will happen, and it's just so brilliant and like frightening at the same time to figure out what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. It's fun when games like that. You kind of like, ooh, where's it going? Mm-hmm. Which to be fair, it's been a while I've played a game that gave me that sense of, oh, what's going next? Yeah. Uh, I think the last time I properly got that was the original playthrough of Destiny. I was like, whoa. Since then, I've been kind of like, well, n- nothing in gaming's really new. I'll tell you what, I got it with fucking Halo 5 and the Halo 5. I really want Halo 6. Whoa, okay then. Not coming right. fast enough. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus Christ, they really have went to war. Yeah? Yeah, that's a terrifying amount of units that just appeared on my screen. Holy shit, they must have been <laughs> building that for ages. 
I like how my turn my turn ended and I was just like right next turn and then fucking every Aztec that I've ever seen in my life was on my screen. <laughs> See for me that is pretty good because that's that's no Aztecs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm going to end that game there because uh, we're at time. Oh. Um, we're actually a little bit beyond time, but fuck it. Yeah, time is a contract. Yeah, pretty much. But um, yeah, I had a good time, guys. We'll do this again sometime. Yeah. Maybe in two yeah. weeks. In like two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, fucking two weeks. It's uh, it's like Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> We'll have Shit's actually been, we'll have been to see it by the time that the next podcast rolls around. Will not be a Star Wars spoiler cast. I imagine we will talk at length about Star Wars, but I think for safety purposes, what we might do is record it before we go and see the new one. It makes sense. Let's yeah. like even if we get together next week, do it like a week early. But if we kind of have a bit of a Star Wars podcast, but deliberately not you talk bastards. about the new one. Um, I'm quite keen to Us actually... or... No, the... Um... PUBG. I'm going to flee away public. from Levian 2 and the fucking Penn Star gal- uh, alignment has just come in and tried to attack me. Oh. God damn. It's like I've left that fleet there for fucking years. minute I move it, they go for it. So it works, man. That's war. It is war. <laughs> war anyway, is hell. War is hell. And so is this podcast. But if you enjoyed it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably enjoy hell. It'd be reasonably <laughs> warm. I'd no folk there. Yeah. Same. All right. If you enjoyed the podcast, check out... Um, uh, check out at Badger Pals on Twitter. We're there. Um, uh, Twitter... Somewhere. Uh, Twitter says, like, you know, when we put up a new video, so that's probably a good thing to follow if you're interested what shit we're putting out. Whoa! Do, uh... Yeah, no, mind-blowing, right? Uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, we do Let's Play every Friday and podcast every two weeks that releases roughly on, roughly on a Tuesday. No, actually on a Tuesday. Roughly 10 o'clock, but actually on a Tuesday. Yeah. Um, Alright, guys, I'll, uh... Catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys.